wearing the tunic that we're going to be sewing today. So this is the color block tunic and you need at least two or yeah, two or three different fabrics um, to make this. We might use two or three. I pulled out both, so I'll decide what I'm going to do with it. So um, anyway, um, we're going to be making the color block tunic and the pattern pieces. I don't know where it is. The pattern pieces look like this for the kids version. There's just two pieces. There's a sleeve and then there's the main tunic. Okay, hey, no, no, just leave that one, please. And then I just traced onto tissue paper the sizes that I need. Oh, hey, Rose, can you go get a pair of scissors? Oh, yeah. Okay, I don't have any paper or scissors back here. Um, all right, so what I'm going to be doing is um, showing you how to use the color block lines. So you can see on this that I trace. I've also marked where we're going to add the color block lines. And the one slightly tricky thing is that you have to add seam allowance where you cut on those seams. So, um, because if you just cut it in half and sew it back together, it will be like this much shorter than you wanted it to be or that the pattern was intended. So we need to add, those are perfect, thank you. So we need to add in our seam allowance um, when we do this. And then I'm using these fabrics. So I have this, I've used these fabrics a lot for other projects, so you might recognize this. This flower, this teal, and the stripe, but I'm not sure, maybe I'll just do Stripe, stripe and teal and not do the flower? I don't know. I'm not exactly sure um, what my plan is. So we'll check that out later. But um, and if you don't want to do that, you can just cut straight across and, and not do the curved hem part of it. So that's totally up to you if you want to do the curved hem or just leave it straight across. It's a little bit extra work to do the curved hem, but I kind of like the look when a tunic, you know, has a little curved up the side. So it's up to you what you want to do. All right. So just two pieces, the sleeve you're going to cut twice on the fold and the front and back, of course, you'll cut one front and one back. So, all right. So now we need to cut apart. Here's the tunic piece. And then I'm going to cut it apart at the color blocking line. And now when I cut this, I need to make sure I add a seam allowance to the bottom of this piece and the top of this piece. Okay, so I'll show you that um, in a minute when I do it. And then the sleeve, if you want, can have two color blocked lines. You could also just do one if you want. It's totally up to you. So I'm going to do the two. So I'm going to cut it at both lines. And I have to make sure I mark which side is the fold so I don't um, mix that up. Okay, so I'm going to mark that. And then again, on these three pieces, there we will add a seam allowance to the bottom of this piece. This middle piece will get a seam allowance added to both sides. And then the bottom cuff, we just add a seam allowance to the top. Okay, so, um, and I would recommend adding the same three-fourths seam allowance that this pattern um, uses, but it's totally up to you. So, you don't want the animal crackers? That's fine, just leave them then. Okay, so we're going to, um, I think I'm gonna use this flower, be, this flower fabric, because it's not, it's pretty wrinkle-free, which is good for kids' clothes, and considering I don't iron. So, um, if I turn my camera to be horizontal, then um, then it's a tall, thin video, which is not as um, appealing for me. So if I want to, because usually I put these up on YouTube, and if I put it on YouTube, the screen then would be like a tiny little video in the middle of the YouTube screen, which is more this shape. So um, that's why I have to leave the video like this. And and last time, okay, go ahead. Last time I did this, the comment showed up fine. So I don't know, you know, why, why the comments aren't, sh aren't showing up. So, all right, this is the bottom part of the front and back, and we are going to cut two of them on the fold. Okay. Um, 
and they're the same for both the front and the back because this is just the bottom of the tunic. Okay, the top part is a little bit different because we have a different neckline for the front and back. So we'll change that up in a minute. All right, and the other thing I'm gonna do with this fabric is I'm gonna cut the bottom cuffs. So I think I'm just gonna make my sleeve, my, my outfit, two colors. So flower, solid, flower, solid, flower on the sleeves. So while I've got this out, I'm gonna also cut um, my sleeve. So this is the top of the sleeve. And we're again gonna cut two of these on the fold and um, we'll go from there. So yeah, so yesterday, or we left the US um, Sunday morning and then we got into Hong Kong at about nine o'clock last night. And of course the kids had slept like five hours on the flight so they weren't overly tired but we made them go to bed anyway and they slept till about five this morning. So. I slept from about midnight to five last night, not including the time I slept on the plane. So it's only one day. I'll be able to, I'll live, shall we say. <laughs> I'll live. All right, so I'm just um, getting this separated here so I can cut these two bottom cuffs as well. Okay, so. You can decide what color blocking you want and what the design you want. For this, because it's a little bit loose and flowy, I would recommend using a lighter knit and not a heavy cotton lycra because that just doesn't have the movement that a lighter fabric does. So you don't want it all stiff. You kind of want it. What, honey? Well, you can get water. Okay, well, wait till you're done. Um, so these are going to be the two bottom cuffs. And we're just going to leave them here. So that's one piece done. So, okay. All right. So there's the one scree or one thing. Let's cut the second part of the sleeve. Okay, and um, those of you who got sergers for Christmas, don't be afraid, you can do it. I, if you have specific questions about serger use, you could definitely ask me over in the pattern group. And if you're not part of my Naptime Creations pattern group, you can just join now by hitting the button in the link to this video. And then I will accept, I have to manually accept the request, but I'll do that as soon as this video is over. Um, and I'll accept everyone's request. So if you're not part of my pattern group and you want a place where you can show off the things that you make inspired by my patterns, I would love for you to go over there and um, grab that. Also, if you don't follow me on Facebook, it's a great place to be able to um, learn about my new patterns and tutorials that I'm doing. So it's Naptime Creations by Emily Thompson is my Facebook handle. And you should be able to find the link for that as well in the video description. So we'll be able to check that out. Okay, so now we have the bottom, front and back, and the two sleeves that are going to be the flower pattern. Okay? You're done? Okay, you can finish. Um, I do have a rotary cutter, Jess, but I'm, I, I'm like... I don't like to use it when I'm cutting out curved lines. So, I mean, it's actually right here, and I do like it. That's okay, Rose. Just do it, Rosie. Just do it yourself this time, okay? The rotary cutter thing, yeah, I'm just like not overly good with doing it on the curved lines. I kind of get scared and nervous, and so I just use my regular cutter. So maybe I should practice. But I use it like when I'm cutting necklines and ribbing. I mean, I do use it a lot, but not for cutting clothes. So, all right, here's the shirt, top of the shirt. And we're going to cut one on the top 
neckline, which is for the back, and one then we're going to cut on the bottom neckline, which is for the front of the tunic. So we're going to cut two of these, and then two of the middle part of the sleeve, and then we're done, and we can head over and start sewing. So should be good. So again, if you're just joining us, we're making... Um, the girls version of my mommy and me color block tunic. So this pattern actually comes in sizes girls 12 months all the way up to women's extra extra large. So that fit will hopefully fit a large range of people both kids and women. So it's meant to be a slightly more loose fitting tunic. It's not um, super tight. So if you want it more fitted, you should probably size down. Um, and if you click over to my blog post about it, you can see the fit, and it is more of a loose fit. So um, depending on what you're looking for, you know, you can adapt the fit of it for yourself. So just um, take a look, download the free pattern. There's two patterns um, that you should grab, the, the girls and the mommies, or of course, what? We're not having a tea party now. You have to wait till I'm done. Rose wants to put water in her teapot, but I said she had to wait till I was done with this because that sounds like I would I would finish this and then have a whole mess to clean up after. So we are hopefully waiting. We'll see if she can be patient. All right, so the last thing we need to do is cut this middle part of the sleeve and I'm going to see if I can cut two at once on the fold. So of course I'm cutting everything with the right side out. You can cut with the right side or the wrong side of the fabric facing you. You just have to make sure whatever you do, you do it consistently um, so that the pattern pieces all go together in the end. So if you cut, um, oh, you know what the other thing was I was doing was I I mean that I didn't point out to you is that as I'm cutting this remember I'm adding the seam allowances so let me show you on this piece I did it on the other pieces but um, I didn't show you we're not having a tea party now I get a tea party no not now okay so on this See, this is the middle part of the sleeve, so they're going to have a, line, a sewing line here and a sewing line here. So this piece needs a seam allowance on both sides, and all the other ones just need a seam allowance on the one side. Okay? So then the last thing we need to do is cut our neck ribbing piece. What? Okay, you can play with that. And um, let's see, the top, I'm going to cut out of the flower so that it is coordinating on our thing. So you want to cut it with the stretchy stretch of the fabric going on the yeah. long part. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. For a neck band, yeah. Rose, I usually just cut a long strip and then trim it later to be the size I need. So the pattern, I'm trying to think, I don't remember what I said on the pattern, probably an inch and a quarter for the kids and an inch and a half for the adults, but I like a really thin neck band. If you like a um, thicker neck band, then you can go ahead and cut it longer, but or wider. But so there's the neck band, and then we have all the pattern pieces. So we're gonna grab these and my pins, and we're gonna head um, back over to my sewing area, and then we're gonna put this together. So let's just. No, I You're not sitting there. Mommy's going to sit there. Um, Kathy, my patterns can be found on my blog, naptimecreations.com. Um, and you can see up here, I've got naptimecreations.com written for you. Or you can also um, find the one for this one in the link to this video. I'm not going to tie her on your neck. No, not going to tie her on your neck. So, all right, we're going to start first with Here. No, not right now. With the serger Hi. and put the pieces together. And if you don't have a serger, you can definitely do this entire pattern just using a regular sewing machine. Um, but um, if if you don't, if you do have a serger, I recommend using it. It's it works wonders when you're sewing with knits, which is stretchy fabric, 
and um, just makes such a nice seam and a professional, more professional finish. So um, if you don't have a serger or overlocker, you just want to make sure when you're sewing your seams that you use like the knit stitch, which is the little lightning bolt stitch, or a zigzag stitch so that your seams have some stretch. Because if you just use a regular stitch, ah, oh, my leg is tied up. If you just use a regular stitch, then um, because the fabric is stretchy, you might pop your seams when you're putting it on over your head or um, things like that. So I'm gonna start by putting the front and back together. So with right sides together, I'm gonna sew the tunic top and the tunic bottom um, together along that middle seam. Okay, so if you aren't comfortable with this, you can go ahead and just um, add some pins in here. I kind of do the stop and start method. Hey, 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 Rosie! You can't be under there. You're pushing up. You're pushing on the machine, okay? You're making it go, and that we can't do that, all right? Nothing like having some help when you're sewing, but I know a lot of you can relate to this, so hopefully it's encouraging to see what, that other people are also dealing with crazy when they're trying to get some work done. I know I definitely am dealing with crazy. Okay, so here is, um, I think this is the back because the neckline is high. Okay, so it's put together there. All right, and again, if you want to um, sew this later and you can um, just fast forward through all my talking or the cutting out if you don't need help with that, you can just hit share and save it. That will save it to your personal Facebook timeline. Or if you have a friend who sews, you can share it to their timeline. Are you giving instructions for that piece? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you hit share, then it will be there and you can find it anytime you want and you won't have to come back. Rosie, it's so stretchy, huh? Was that my neck piece that you just stretched out? No. No, no, that wasn't. Okay, you can have that one. That Maybe that was the neck band I cut that she's stretching away there. Um, anyway, but if you share it, then it will be saved to your timeline and um, we can go from that. So... Uh, thank you guys for the encouragement. Yes, we are, um, it's a little bit of a crazy freak show around here. Oh, that is not right sides together. Glad I checked. I know, sometimes I can do a whole video and she's not even around. She's busy doing other things, but when we fly... Um, you know, so yesterday we, we flew from Des Moines to Chicago, which is just like a one hour flight and the kids did great. And then from Chicago to Hong Kong, it was over 15 hours. So we let the kids watch as much TV as they want on those flights because they have like the screens in the seat and you can just go hours and hours and hours. So since she probably watched 10 hours of TV yesterday, I did not put her normal show on. Usually I put a show on for her um, while I'm sewing because then she at least isn't here for the whole time. We're not watching George right now. Okay. So, anyway, um, Marie, I am sewing um, a color blocked tunic for my daughter. She's actually wearing one. If you didn't see before, this is what we're sewing. This was a pink, and I shared the snowflake template. If you wanna put snowflakes on anything, you can put it on a pillow, like a throw pillow, you could put it on a mug. Um, the template works on anything. So anyway, you can grab the tunic and you can grab the free snowflake template, both of my blog. But this is what we're sewing, and the pattern comes in kid sizes and adult sizes. So. Um, if you go look at my blog, you can see I, we kind of did a mommy and me photo shoot with Rose and I. So, all right, so here's the front and the back of the tunic put together. And now we're going to sew the sleeves. So the sleeves are three parts. Um, and I'll show you those three parts as soon as I get this, the tissue taken off. 
So I trace all my patterns on tissue paper and then I just throw these away because um, usually I don't sew the same pattern over and over in the same size. I might make it different sizes, but I'll make it once for her this season and then I might make it once for her next season. So I keep the paper printouts. I don't want to. What? Yeah. <laughs> You're being silly. I keep the paper printouts and then I just um, trace the size that I need. So here is what Mommy, the sleeve like looks two. like. Okay, so the hem allowance is included as well as the seam allowances except for where we cut it in half. You have to add those seam allowances yourself when you're doing it. So wherever you cut the paper, the tissue, where on the cut line you have to add the 3 8 seam allowance back or your sleeve will be shorter and your tunic will be a little bit shorter. It won't, it won't not work, it just might be a little too short because you'll be sewing those two seams and cinching it in. So, um... There we go. Okay, yeah, I have both a sewing machine and a serger, and we're gonna do parts of this on both machines today, but you could sew the whole thing on a regular sewing machine. You do not need a serger um, to do this project. It just is nice to have, but it's not necessary. This basically goes together like a shirt, obviously, but we're just, I'm just showing you um, a little bit extra of the tutorial of how to do the color blocking. And then another thing that's a little bit different is I'll show you how to do the curved lines on the hem. And um, so that's just a little, the, the way this is different from like putting a normal t-shirt together. But otherwise, if you know how to put a t-shirt together, this will go really quick for you and you won't have any problems putting it together. Those of you just joining, did you get any fun um, sewing or crafting related things for Christmas? I shared at the very beginning of this, so there's our sleeve, at the very beginning of this that I got some really soft double brushed um, cotton fabric, which is supposed to be very similar to the fabric they use on the LuLaRue leggings, which um, I'm excited about because, you know, when you sew your own clothes, you love to make copycats. Just like with recipes, we like to make copycats of our fav favorite restaurants. I like to make copycat things of what I see in the store. So anyway, I'm sure I'll be sewing up some leggings soon using my new fabric. So um, it feels really soft. And actually, I got a pair of LuLaRue leggings for Christmas for my sister. Um, so, and the fabric does feel really similar. Maybe not quite as soft as the buttery feel of the LuLaRue, but it's pretty good. If you don't want to sew your own leggings, I know, I think April from Mama Loves Food is selling LuLaRue leggings tonight, so you should check it out. So, um, she sells all their gorgeous clothes. And if you don't sew for yourself, it's a great way to get some cute things. So, all right, so we have two sleeves and now a front and a back. Okay, so now we're gonna put it together just um, like we would most of any um, other leggings. So if you're watching this in, um, and it says at the top, shared by, and you leave a comment to let you know I won't be, um, I won't be, let me think what I'm saying here, um, what was I saying? Oh my goodness, I can't even, I can't even think. I don't know. All right, we're putting the shirt together. My brain is fried after not very much sleep. All right, so I'm gonna sew a shoulder seam together before I put on the um, neck band. Rose, what are you coloring on that with? Just water, okay. All right, so sewing a shoulder seam. Yep, yeah, so this is what a serger does to the seams is it finishes the edge and it sews the seam. So normally 
it just would sew the seam and not finish the edge. So if you look inside clothes that you've purchased, um, they're almost always sewn with a serger on the inside. All right, so I'm gonna pin on with right sides together the neckline. And I like doing it like this, opened up. It's just easier than doing it in a circle. Um, makes it really simple. So the way that I do my necklines, and I've, I think this pattern has the math done for you, but I'll just show you if you're looking for other patterns, is I measure the neckline and I just kind of do it like this with the measuring tape. So it's 15 and a half inches and then I do 80% of that. So luckily we have the computer here for me to do a little cheat on the math. Um, oh, this is a new computer and I don't even know where my calculator is. So calculator, okay. So what we want to put in is 15.5 times point eight, and that will give you 80%. So it's 12.4. So I'm going to cut my neckband 12 and a half inches, and then that will give us, and it would be a little extra for the seam allowance, um, that will give us a really nice stretch in our neckband. So if your fabric is not very stretchy, this is really stretchy. If it's not very stretchy, you can always use 90% if you don't think 80% is going to stretch enough. So that's my um, formula for doing neck bands and go from there. So, all right. So you guys are talking about sergers, which is awesome. There are some great deals on Amazon. If you wait, they do go on sale. So it's a great place to get sergers. And if I see a really good deal, I usually try to share it on my Facebook page, let you know that it's on sale. What I would love is a cover stitch machine because that like does professional um, hems. And you can also do like the top stitching that you see on sweatshirts and stuff. So cool. But I can't have everything. I'm gonna be real, I'm really happy that I was able to get a new computer over Christmas and um, <laughs> a new phone holder for my tripod after the last one bit the dust. If you were watching the show when it broke, I was sewing along and Rose bumped my tripod and the whole thing crashed over on me and the part of it that holds my phone, which is what's taking this video, um, yeah, totally fell down on me. So I am um, pinning this, this on the, uh, along the neckline, stretching it as I go. Okay. So there you go. Um, and just kind of lining it up. So it is kind of a back and forth, making sure there's, what is that doing? space and when you use the 80% rule you do need to stretch it quite a bit but I really like the way that it lays when you're all done if you stretch it more so if you don't stretch your neckline enough it might stick up a little bit on your collar but if you want to lay really nice and flat that's when you want to really stretch it when you're pulling it so um we'll go from there okay what a bug where on the pillow. On the pillow? Yeah. I don't see it. Use the tissue and squish it. <laughs> in Hong Kong, there are cockroaches. So we have some in our house and they're the tiny ones. They're not like the huge ones that they have like in Texas, but uh, it's still not fun, but part of living. You got it? Part of living in a subtropical climate. Not the part that I like. The weather, I like. The other things that some of it comes with living in a warm weather climate, don't love. All right. So I'm stretching and sewing the neck band, making sure to catch all three layers. And the three layers that I'm touching are two of the neck band and one 
layer of the shirt. Okay, so you want to catch all three or you'll have a weird gap. And I always check before I top stitch because sometimes I do miss one of the layers as I'm going. on okay nice and small and narrow which I like and what I want to do is I want to go along here now and check oh, to, to make sure that we don't have any holes in the neckline okay so um, Heather has a Janome soldiers and serger and she loves it Mommy, I got a oh good good squish it I have this is a Janome sewing machine and I love it too so um, Let's just do, okay. you squished it? Oh, good. Squish that bug. Um, it's It should cool off here. Um, and by cool off, I mean like 40s or 50s, and then we don't see as many bugs. But um, sometimes it takes a while to get to that point. Oh, boy. What did I just do? Um... Sorry, I messed up with how I was scheduling this. Oh, I was trying to schedule this and I did it wrong. Why? Um, well, I was just trying to share it. Okay. Huh? My mommy? I was just trying to share it and I did it. Um, anyway, so when it does cool off, Hopefully we don't see as many cockroaches for a while, but um, yeah, I um, yeah, we'll see if that happens. So anyway, all right. So now we're going to um, top stitch along here, and um, and we're gonna top stitch. And what I'm doing is I'm using my regular sewing machine. But I have woolly nylon thread in the bobbin, which is a stretchy thread, and I also am using a double needle. And that combination allows to have a really nice finish on your neckline. And if you want more information about that, in the in the video um, description, I have a link to the post that I did about making hems and necklines on your knit fabric. So that will give you all the details about the woolly nylon thread and also um, the double needle, so you can check that out. So, and I always, when I'm top, stitch, top stitching, I lengthen my thread a little bit, so I'm lengthening it to about a three, and then we're gonna sew along here. And we, we don't wanna stretch the neckline, but we don't wanna have any tuckers either. So it's a balance of not stretching it, but also pulling it slightly so it lays flat. And then I'll show you when I'm done how it looks. And it's such a nice um, finish. So, uh, Janice, I don't hand wind the woolly nylon, um, but I don't, it's a kind of a combination of hand winding. I use my serger or my machine to pull it through, but I just thread it through my finger for tension. So I don't use the tension on the machine. That threads it too tight. Um, but I do use it for the spinning motion, and then I do the tension with my fingers. So I guess it's kind of a combination of um, finger and using the machine. And I have a video tutorial on that post, so you can check it out, that shows you how to do it. So you can buy woolly nylon. Um, isn't that nice around the neck? It looks so, it looks so cool. And on the back you can't really see, because um, it's the same color thread, but the bo bobbin kind of does a little zigzag, which allows for this to be a really stretchy stretch stitch. Yeah. So when you're pu putting it over a head, it's not gonna pop the seams. Okay, oh boy, look at you, okay? So now we're gonna move back to the serger, and um, we're gonna sew the other 
shoulder back up. So then we've completed the top. Oops, wrong presser foot. Okay, so I'll just flip this over and you can see that that's a nice neck band and it's stitched along there and looks really nice, okay? So next we're gonna put in our sleeves and the sleeves are the same front and back. There's no difference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, sometimes the sleeve has a front and a back and then you need to, you know, be aware of that. This sleeve does not. It was cut on the fold. So we're gonna find the center of the sleeve and we're gonna match it with the shoulder. Okay, and then we're gonna put the other part of the sleeve on the side over here, and then we're gonna put the other corner of the sleeve on this side, and then we're just gonna ease it all in. So, um, and when I say, when, when a sewing, when something that you're sewing says ease, it means you're not, you shouldn't have to like stretch it and you're not really gathering it, but it's just a matter of laying and playing with it until it lays flat. So, and because an arm, when you're sewing on an arm, one curve is this way, and one curve is this way, it's um, a little more interesting to put together. So we're just gonna ease that in there so it lays nice and flat. And then we're gonna sew it up. Okay, so that's one there. Yes, right sides together, right sides together. We're sewing everything um, right sides together, at least in this sewing project. Sometimes you don't, but in this one, we are. Okay, and then I'm sewing uh, with a 3 8 seam allowance around, and again, making sure that there aren't any puckers or gathers. And um, again, this pattern comes in sizes for adults and kids. So if you don't have any kids, you can use this tutorial to make one for yourself. Um, you don't have to have, the sizes are, or you can make like I did, matching ones for your daughter and yourself, or whatever you want, if you're into the matching thing. I know not everyone's into matching, um, but there are the options. So there is one sleeve on. So, um, Jenny, Janie, Janny, sorry. Um, as far as tucking in the tails, I don't like this one for the shoulder. I didn't tuck it in because I knew it was going to be surged into the shoulder seam. So, if it's completely left exposed, like say this one here on the neckline, nothing is going to be catching that. I will um, either sew it in or um, thread it through with a needle, um, but I do finish those seams because if you just cut those, and they're not tucked in at all, you will, um, they can fray, and then, you know, you don't want your seams to come undone. So if it if it's gonna get tucked into another seam, I just leave it, and then it gets included in another seam. If it's not going to, then I definitely um, do another one. I tuck it in. All right, so there's the center. Um, Julie, this, the sewing machine is a Janome memory craft, and this serger is an ISO, which I bought here in Hong Kong, and I think it's an Asian brand, because when I've looked in the U.S. or even on Amazon, I don't see them. I think it was not very expensive, so I think it's similar to a lower level brother or, um, singer serger. That's kind of my impression of it. It doesn't really do anything fancy. It just kinds of um, goes through. So even if spell checks changes serger to server, I know what you're trying to say. I know that it is. Um, I do have a love hate relationship with spell check, right? Don't we all? That it's sometimes we love it. It's helpful. Sometimes I'm like, why are you changing that word? Why are you changing that word? All right, so we're sewing on the other sleeve now with right sides together. 
Rose, are you, what is with all the water over there? You don't know. I'm using the included 3 8 seam allowance and just kind of making, going slow and making sure that I'm catching both the sleeve and the top in, in the stitch. After two weeks on vacation and not vlogging or I mean I did pop on Facebook live a couple times while I was at my mom's house um, I showed you how to make our favorite fondue recipe and I also showed you um, my family's houses which is like our version of gingerbread houses that we've been making for years and years so but this week I'm back to reality back to um, yeah, back to my, back to my life, which, I mean, I love, but, you know, it's school pickups, the boys are back at school today, and all that stuff, so, all right, so here it's looking so, so cute, and now I'm going to show you how to finish the bottom, so, I forgot to mark on the pattern, or transfer the marking from the pattern, but the pattern has a mark, um, about an inch and a half from the bottom, of the hem so we're just going to estimate um, and what we're going to do is before we sew the side seam we're going to do the curved hem and that allows us to um, put the curved hem in and at least this is the way I do it so because otherwise you couldn't get the curve when you get to this part of the um, hem so this is kind of the way I do it if you have a better way you could go ahead and tell me about it or you could also like um, you know, just do it how you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to ease in the hem. So the first part, oh, here's another thing. Sometimes I finish the bottom of my hem first, like I'll serge it or zigzag it, but I often just turn it under because this is something for, um, my daughter. It's not something fancy. She's not wearing it to anything special. So I'm not, and it won't fray no matter how much I wash it. So I'm just going to turn it under. So if you really want to finish the edge first, do that now before you hem it. But um, I just don't usually do that. So, all right, so we're going to turn under, um, let's see, just about an inch and a half from the bottom. I'm going to turn under, I'm going to start with about a fourth inch. And then I'm going to ease my hem to about, about a half inch, not quite. Um, the wider the hem, the harder it is to go around the corner, okay? So you're just going to kind of ease around that corner and pin it. I'm not going to pin the straight bottom because um, I, just, I just go across it, but I am going to pin the curved edges. So again, on this side, I'm going to start with about a fourth inch under, and then I'm going to ease to about a half inch under and I'll show you in a minute what this looks like on the back and then this curve you just kind of have to ease it around and pin it okay so here's the front of my curved edge and here's the back of my curved edge okay so we're just gonna sew that around so I'm gonna hem it using the, um, I guess I'll pin the other side as well. So the pattern does give you a marking and tell you where to um, start pinning on the curved edge. So if you want it to be higher or lower for the curved edge, you can edit that as much as you want. But um, I do give a suggestion, a suggested place to start your curve um, on the pattern. So you can take a look at that. Alright, so um, anyway, we're just pinning this. If, um, if you're watching this, I know I've said this before, if you're watching this and it says shared by, like Emily Thompson shared Mama Loves Food video, and you leave a comment, I won't be able to see it till later if you comment on that shared video post. 
but if you click over, click the video and leave a comment, then I'll be able to see it right away. Okay, because it will be, um, it will show up on this one that I'm doing or on the screen that I'm watching. So, all right, so we're gonna um, hem the bottom from my first pin where I'm easing in and I'm not back stitching because I'm going to include that first part of the hem in my um, side seam when I get there. So I start close to the edge of the fabric because my, uh, remember I started my hem at about a fourth inch, but now as I get wider and the hem gets wider, I am moving my stitching to about a half inch in from the edge of the fabric. Okay, and then I'm just going to hem across the straight bottom. Pat, Facebook reverses everything, so actually my machine looks the same as yours. It just is reversed in this Facebook video. So it is actually, the bed is actually on the left, just like yours. It just doesn't look like it in, on your screen at the moment. Um, a lot of people always say, oh, is it a left-handed sewing machine? But no, no, it's not. It's just a regular one. Okay, so you might have a couple um, puckers on the back of your curve, but um, it doesn't show on the front, and the front looks like a nice curved hem. So. I just go with it. Again, there may be a better way to do this. This is the way I've been doing my curved hems. When I look at garments that come from the store, it's how they look like they do their curved hems, sewing it before they sew the side seam. But of course, I'm open to any tips or tricks that you might have for making that curved hem better. Obviously, you could just do a narrow rolled hem and then that would um, not pucker at all because it would be really narrow. So the narrower your hem on the curve, the easier it is to make sure it lays flat. The wider, the more chance you might have for puckers or gathers. So, hmm. It appears that this is pulling funny. I don't know why my tension is off. I guess it's back. I don't know. One of the threads wasn't coming out properly, maybe. Oh, it is. It's pulling weird. Maybe my bobbin needs to be re-threaded. Alright, so I'm just going around here, finishing off this curved side. And I'll show you what this looks like before we do the side seams. So, all right, so there is the bottom. We have curved side, curved side, and then straight across the bottom. So the last thing to do on this before we're, we're finished is to sew up the side seams. So, um, oh, no, one more thing. I need to hem the sleeves. Sorry, so I didn't hem the sleeves. So I'm going to turn under... Um, a half inch hem on the edge of the sleeve. There, that, seam, that hem allowance is built into the pattern and I'm just going to sew across. So I'm sewing on the right side of the fabric because that's where I want my double needle stitch to be. And um, if you sew on the back side then you'll get this weird zigzag and not the nice double needle hem. So if you can see. So the double needle puts the nice double stitch right across there and then the back has kind of that zigzaggy stitch but it's very stretchy so it shouldn't break when hands and arms are going in and out of this shirt. So you can also just use a zigzag stitch um, but I like I think the straight stitch is a little bit nicer look and 
if you just do a regular straight stitch, it's really easy for those seams to break because it's not a stretchy stitch at all. So when you use the double needle, then you get the stretch and, um, and the nice look, okay? All right, so now we're gonna start at one of the um, sleeves and with right sides together, I'm gonna sew down the sleeve to the armpit, down to the bottom. And I'll show you how I'm, when I get to the curved hem part, I'm not gonna sew all the way down, but I am gonna sew far enough to catch in the beginning part of that curve. So I'll show you what it looks like after I do one, and then um, talk it a little bit more through as I do the second one. Okay, so the other thing you wanna kind of make sure is that you're lining up your color block lines as you're going down the side of the garment. So that those fabrics are lined up. And then get right in there when you get to the... connection part. And if you feel that sometimes I feel like my stitch right here in the underarm isn't super secure. And then I will um, go over it again on the regular sewing machine. All right, so when I get down to where this curved hem is, I'm gonna open up that hem seam. And then sew right off from where the curve is. And I will have to tuck that under, but, okay. So you can see how here on the inside, I just sewed down and I caught the first part of the hem in there. And then on the outside, it looks like a nice um, curved hem on the side of the tunic. And I will go back and forth here on the sewing machine when I'm done to secure the serger thread and to secure the curve of the tunic. All right, so I'm just gonna sew up the other um, serve the other sleeve and the other side seam. Just right down there. I've got like six suitcases sitting in my living room waiting to be <laughs> unpacked from our trip. So that's probably what I'll be working on the rest of the day. As well as trying to stay awake from the jet lag. All right. So when I get down here, I'm opening up those seam allowances the hem allowance and then sewing just past where the hem starts to bring it all in together all right so we're just going to finish the bottom of this well let me show you first how cute it looks we'll bring rose in here to try it on in a minute but super cute right all right, so um, we're gonna finish the curved part of the tunic by taking the serger thread, tucking it under, and then just sewing straight across there. So I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Um, let me trim these other threads that are hanging out here. All right, so we have this loose serger tail that I don't want to fray. So I'm just going to, with my double needle, I'm gonna just going to go back and forth across that top of the curved part of the tunic. Okay, so just to finish that, see how I just went back and forth there, and then you have a nice finished curved tunic line. And we'll do the same on the other. So I'm trimming these extra threads here. And then we're just going to go back and forth, securing that serger thread and just securing the top of that curved line. And then we have a couple more places we need to finish those serger tails before I have 
Rose come and show you what it looks like on. But I love this fabric. I have a, um, I made myself a shirt out of this flowered fabric and I wear it all the time. Um, so it goes from there. So, um, Donis, yes, we did get to see lots of snow in Wisconsin. It was so great. The kids loved it because of course there's no snow here. So, um, and Caroline, we do live in Hong Kong. My husband works at a school here and the kids go to that school. So that is why we're here. And I've been here for, this is my 14th school year. So a long, long time. This has been home for us. All right, so I'm just um, going back and forth on the edge of the sleeve. Just a little line here to, to get that serger seam in so that doesn't fray. Okay, so I'm going to do the other sleeve. I'm just taking the serger tail and I'm tucking it in and folding that seam allowance over and then just going a little bit back and forth with the double needle. And that secures in that serger tail so then I can clip it close and it won't fray. You can also take a large like darning needle and thread the serger tail through it and then go back so let's see, one more on the neck. Um, go back through your seam and that will also secure the tail. Rose, can you come here for a minute? What? Okay, well, can you come here? I want you to try on your new shirt, okay? I'm finished. Can you come put it on? You're painting? Oh, that's something you usually need to wait for mommy to do, okay? All right, come here. Ah, paint. Okay, good thing it's Crayola washable. All right, so, all right, so Rose is going to put on her new tunic here, and you can see the final result. So make sure if you like this pattern that you go ahead and share this video to your timeline, and also that you download the free pattern so that it's ready for you to make when you're ready. And um, there's a photo tutorial on my blog, which is linked in this video. And then there's also this video tutorial that you can use now to help put it together if you're not sure about some of the parts. So I know some people really like seeing it on video and for some of you maybe it's just easier to um, see it in the picture form. Okay. I can't stand. You can't stand? You can stand on mommy. So there you go. A nice curved hem tunic. You can lengthen or, don't pick your nose. Lengthen or shorten depending on your needs. Please don't. Hey. Okay. Don't pick your nose. <laughs> lengthen or shorten depending on your needs. You can change up the colors. How many colors? Yeah. That, oh, stop. Just wait. How yeah. many colors you use? Three colors look nice. Yeah. This is a two color version, which I think looks pretty nice too. So um, I... Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you'll come back again Wednesday night at 745 Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. and join me for another sewing tutorial. I don't know what I'll be doing, but it'll be something fun and you won't want to miss it. So thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. Have a great night or morning wherever you are in the world. Bye.